well, I guess ever since I co-wrote this paper with Dana Claxton, um, and we were commissioned or whatever by the Artists and Institutions Conference. It's online, and some of them, so they commissioned some essays after it. Dana nor I attended the conference, so we <laughs> yeah, so we watched all the footage of the talks and stuff like that, and wrote this um, paper. And in it, we were sort of um, you know positing like alternatives and, and trying to trying to kind of figure out the space around Aboriginal people and art and institutions kind of thing. So also talking about you know um, Aboriginal-run gallery spaces and and that you know. Um, those assets we have, but then saying, okay, well, how do we take things kind of a little bit further or whatever? And in that conversation, I had been thinking also for a little while about this idea. Of, so, okay, you know, so there's, you know, Aboriginal artists being shown and galleries, which is awesome, and group shows and, and curators, and, and that's all great, but I'm also like, well, I moved to the, I moved back to my home reserve, Miss Gauntlet, like a couple years back, and I'm like, but my work is always in the cities. You know, and, and there's lots of artists locally as well, but like sort of how they're divergent things, right? There's the contemporary art world sort of thing, and then there's um, you know more cultural arts production on reserve. But there's and there's some gift shops on reserve and stuff. But there's no sort of there's no purpose built spaces that I know of. Like I didn't know if maybe Six Nations or something had them because that's a big reserve. But I don't know of any gallery on a reserve. So. So it, it made it like a, like kind of a conundrum for me. Like so, what so what is that? You know, I enjoy the work I do. I enjoy the artist run centers and galleries, and I think they're really important. And it's important to show Aboriginal people there, and you know, and all people, or whatever. But I don't know. But then there was just like this gap. So what does it mean for me living on a reserve? I don't ever get to really share my work there. It, or and then it was like, well, or is it even relevant? <laughs> Maybe that sort of cultural arts production on reserve has it, enough of its own thing. But then I, I realized I don't think that's true because most of the people I know, like I did a residency with Dolores Purdue. She's a basket maker, been doing it her whole life. You know, um, very limited income from that. You know, beautiful work that I see is this kind of holistic picture of um, preserving culture. And, uh, uh, but yeah, the economics don't work for it and her, you know, she, I think she would appreciate a bigger audience for her work and that kind of thing. So, so then I just started thinking about this um, idea of a land-based gallery and that the gallery could be um, sort of indigenous knowledge based but not necessarily, that it doesn't necessarily only show indigenous artists, although that would obviously be important. Um, so those are the ideas that were sort of running through my head and um, I don't know if people know the Dechinta University. It's also called the Bush University. Yeah, I was looking at yeah, it. My link. Yeah, my So that's a really inspiring project where they've taken that sort of uh, the education part of things out onto the land and said, this is where our education is. And so, yeah. Oh, it's out, it's out east. I can't remember exactly where it is now. I don't remember. I don't remember. Province. Hmm? Not in this province. Uh, I think it's Ontario. Yeah, I think it's Ontario, Northern Ontario. Is it called Dechinta? Dechinta, I think. D e c h i n t a. But people also call it the Bush University. And so yeah, and so Dana and I talked about this too in writing the paper, and I, you know, tentatively named it the Bush Gallery, and there was these ideas, and I just thought, you know, there's a bunch of us coming together, coming from those same kinds of themes and ideas, and I just wanted to see if anyone was interested in thinking about them more and. Yeah. So uh, that That's was essentially where that came from, you know. Idea. Yeah, I was like, we're we're here. I, you know, yeah. I, I don't. It's not something I like. I'm interested in doing on my own. You know what I mean? It's not like it's something. Uh, it's a collective. Yeah, it's a collective, and it involves people where it is. But it's also like I don't necessarily want to do it just here either. Yeah. It's like how did, how does that space okay. happen? Yeah, in a city or in another reserve or. Just what are some of those models, right? There's ideas of mobile galleries, right, in RVs and trucks and stuff like that, or setting up, you know, on the spot in tents, like, yeah. Like the nomadic, um, yeah. the things, tribes, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. carry everything around. Yeah, so there's those kinds of ideas, and then there's like, but then what does it mean when you are in a place, like, you know, you're in Toronto or you're in Montreal, then, then that indigenous knowledge sort of model is how do you, how do you connect with the roots of that place? Um, that's... Those are fascinating ideas. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can see so many, so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything from 
and having now just recently moved to Vancouver, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. they have these pop-up shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking, okay, so, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's mobile, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, serendipitous, or, you know, a gathering, people mm -hmm. get together, they decide to show and have a pop-up, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, a pop-up gallery. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of my, one of the projects that I'm working on, um, in fact, the main project here is finishing the design of my mobile archive, mm. which is my PhD. Right, okay. So I'm calling it a um, uh, the Exploding Archive, mm -hmm. a Sovereign Display Territory. Mm -hmm. okay. So, and I'm making the case that wherever this archive lands, and it's a big room, it's mm -hmm. going to be a room on wheels, that it's sovereign territory. Right, okay. No matter where yeah, it's yeah, set, yeah. That's, that's kind of a political mm -hmm. kind of act. But this idea of spaces, mobile spaces, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, really interests me, mm -hmm. and how you can make that happen, mm -hmm. apart from what I'm doing with the PhD, yeah. but how can we create these spaces that um, allow us to, to do what we want, mm -hmm. exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think part of that conversation with Ben in that paper was also talking about how do we build momentum, build something that's interesting like that and sustainable without falling into, you know, um, institutional practice where you're you're funding a space and you're funding a staff, and, exactly. you know, something that's a bit more flexible and a bit more um, and how to open. maybe move it, have it mobile to the degree that it can have enough time mm -hmm. to build relationships and be in place mm -hmm. in a territory for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And move, and mm -hmm. so that it can really there can be something mm -hmm. meaningful and connecting mm -hmm. in that place. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and that's the key. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. For it to grow One of the interesting models uh, I'm thinking of is uh, mm -hmm. in the '80s, the. I guess 70s and 80s, Tessera, the, the, the feminist journal Tessera, mm -hmm. which never had its, or for a long time, didn't have its own uh, publication base, but it would take over, squat on other people's journals, right, mm -hmm. saying, can we get, can we have this journal? Mm -hmm. And they use their des you know, designers and all, but they have their complete content. Mm -hmm. And the other example is from the new gallery when, uh, again, in the late 80s, when our group, which was the Mingguan Panchayat, right, had taken, taken over the programming for a year, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. with the tacit permission of the uh, of the program of the, the board. Mm -hmm. They weren't too pleased with because they didn't know what was going to happen. That's the that's the thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that, that fits into this uh, potential model of saying to not just create new the whole new newness of creation mm -hmm. can be a, a problem because it doing it you know reinventing things. Yeah, but if you can yeah. walk into a space yeah. where people are willing to share resources mm -hmm. um, exactly. that can contribute to this marvelously. And of course maybe your your project is just it fits so nicely into this a great dovetail. Mm -hmm. so. I have to say also that the that this idea is that yeah some knowledge needs to come from the land there needs to be a connection mm -hmm. to the actual and that can still happen in the in a city and in a space mm -hmm. like I think about post commodities piece with Sydney Biennale where they excavated the yeah. cement and, and the, you know, exposed the dirt and like so there's ways I think that really interesting ways artists can uh, work that out but yeah. definitely for me there's something about yeah. And, and, and also maybe it exists simultaneously in different places of yeah. the too. That there's something about building um, those, you know, educational kind of models and, and learning to appreciate local indigenous knowledge and stuff that's really important and linking to other, you know, struggles going on with land and stuff like that. So, it, it, uh, the last ACC um, hmm. the vision yeah, session we had was in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that we started off with was um, we need to find our place here. Mm -hmm. And so we went off in teams mm -hmm. and did something in the landscape, mm -hmm. went for a walk, found out some history, uh, looking for wind dance, mm -hmm. you know, looking for, mm -hmm. looking for signs mm -hmm. in the city. And then we brought the others around. Mm -hmm. So it was an extraordinarily it was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, um, it it was resourceful. We had to make art from. In, in one case, a, a team found it was a really lowly day. Found all these umbrellas and tatters, mm -hmm. and then did this really kind of extraordinary um, installation. We went up to Montreal mm -hmm. and start looked at, not only looked at the view, but did a. a um, an installation that we gathered 
all the way up the hill mm -hmm. and then consecrated it mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and uh, videotaped it because mm -hmm. we couldn't bring our team. We were too far away from the team. So, mm -hmm. And then brought it back to our team mm -hmm. on an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and that, that um, um, started a discussion around um, what's happened to the native populations that were indigenous to Montreal, mm -hmm. to the land yeah. of Montreal. Yeah. And um, it opened up the session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.